Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here and Marty and we're back in Death Valley doing some exploring today. Today we don't really have a set plan, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants and so we'll see where we end up. We made it up to the beehive shaped kilns and I'll tell you what, it's about 30 degrees colder and roughly 7,000 feet higher than what we've been accustomed to these last couple of days. There's even snow still on the ground here. Brr, I'm freezing. You can see Marty standing off in the distance. It is beautiful up here. The scenery is just amazing with the snow covered mountains and the trees. It's like a totally different world out here. As crazy as this sounds, this is big enough you could actually build a house in this. I'm surprised nobody ever inhabited these and made them into homes. The acoustics are just crazy. Echo. Echo. It's crazy, crazy. Anyways, I think we're gonna head down to a lower elevation and warm up by checking out some old mining, mining stuff. We made it to, I think it's pronounced Augaberry or Augaberry Camp, which you can see in the background. There's somebody over there doing photography. So I'm walking up to check something else out and on the way back, we'll take a look, see at it, hopefully. He'll have moved on and I won't be interrupting his photography shoot. Anyways, I believe that is the mine that Augaberry was mining. We'll walk over to that in a moment. What I'm really interested in looking at is there's this old car sitting out here. What is that, an old Packard? There's no emblem on it. Definitely old. I don't know, maybe it's an old Buick. I'm thinking it might be an old Buick. I can't find any emblems on it, so I have no clue. Well, what would you look at to see? As far as what would clue you in as to the type of vehicle it is? The internet, we don't have that out here. <laughs> no, we don't. 40 some Buick. It's definitely seen better days. If you know what it is, leave it in the comments section below. Upon closer inspection, I don't believe this is an old mine. Artie and I are thinking it could have been possibly an old sluice or maybe even the stand for a water tank. Kind of hard to tell considering it's all collapsed on itself, but I can definitely tell it's not an old mine. You can see at one time the path I'm walking on used to be a road, and that's how they got up to there. Here's the entrance to one of the mines. Well, it looks like we have the place to ourselves now. There's the remains of the camp. According to the little placard that's here by the National Park Service, a man by the name of Pete Agaberry mined this claim for 40 some years. And this here would have been his house. Not really sure what the other buildings were for. The plaque doesn't say. This looks like an old water catch basin. At first we thought maybe it was an old bathtub, but it doesn't make any sense that there would be just a square hole cut out of it. And if you look here, there's what appears to be a float that would have told you how much water was inside. Or it could have been hooked to some valve. So when it's low, the valve opened, let water in, it kept it full. I mean, the hole might have been for some livestock to drink out of, I don't know. If we step inside Pete's old home, you can see he had a fridge, a stove, 
And then his bedroom is back there. You can see the remains of his cot. Imagine in here he probably used as his kitchen and living room, living space. And then obviously there was no bathroom in here. But a quick walk from the house was the outdoor privy. Other known as house. Leave it to Marty. That's why I do most of the narration. Otherwise everything would be all bleeped out. Next door to Pete's house is this building here. Not sure what this was or who it belonged to, but it had at one time a working bathroom. So they still have the old shower in here and what's left of the sink, a hot water heater, and the old toilet sitting back there. And then next door is this little shack here, which has the remains of an old refrigerator and springs, probably from a chair or something. Maybe a little love seat. It looks too small for a bed. Unless the person was super short, which judging by the height of the door frame and the ceiling, that might have been the case. Well, let's pop the fridge open and see if there's anything inside. Eh. Somebody left a white claw. Too bad it's already been drank. Look at that. It's the remains of the curtains that were over the window. And then this is the other half of it, which there's nothing in here, nothing left. As we were driving back down the road here, we noticed this, the remains of a clothesline, <laughs> or at least the end for a clothesline. Obviously the clothesline itself is no longer there. Here's the foundation of a house. I guess this used to be the location of one of the largest milling operations in Death Valley. When was the last time you seen an Olympia beer can? Actually, when was the last time they actually made Olympia beer? Oh, look at that. It's an old boiler sitting out here, left over from the mill. And then up on the hill are the old water tanks. Walking down the wash, we discovered some old vehicles. Now that's awesome. So you got this old pickup truck and then this vehicle here and then that one up there. Now, if you can tell what kind of vehicle this is, to me, it almost reminds me of a vehicle that you would have seen back in the day of like Al Capone, John Dillinger, back, back in the mobster days. And then you got this one here, which I have no idea what that is either. And then just a short walk from there, you've got this vehicle which is laying on its roof. Well, I'm gonna hike up this hill. Apparently there's some stuff up here as well. Nothing to really see up here, except when you look down over the ledge, you got the concrete foundations from the mill that was here. Special thanks goes out to all our fellow sightseers here on Patreon and PayPal. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible.